Okay, I'm back. How you doing? And um, in this segment, I'm going to assemble the wing, the aileron push rods, and the aileron servos together. So I got two wings, got the joiner tube that goes between them. I've got my two aileron um, push rods and um, got my little box that has the clevises in it. Got my left aileron servo, my right aileron servo, and I've got the um, receiver with the telemetry module attached and my battery uh, with the switch attached and my radio. And um, I think I'm going to start with the uh, with the right wing, I'll put the left wing back uh, over here. So I'm going to turn this over and the first thing we're going to do is this is the right wing, okay, it's the right wing and so we're going to put the right aileron servo in it. Okay, so the right aileron servo is still attached to the receiver, but it has the connection here, the little six inch lead, and the, um, I'm gonna unplug that, and so we, we've got this big long uh, servo wire, and then a um, extension wire, 12 inch, and these, if you recall, I taped those together with electrician's tape. So, uh, as you can see, the servo, will um, go here. The extension wire, the, the wire for the servo won't come out the end of the airplane and uh, but the extension wire will. And how we're going to do that is, okay, I told you before when we were first looking at it, this has a little bitty string with some masking tape there and the little bitty string is over here with some masking tape on the end. And the purpose of that little itty bitty string, don't lose it, is to pull the extension wire and thus everything else through. And that's why we um, put uh, electrician's tape uh, so that we can um, um, mount this or pull it through. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave this end attached with tape. I'm going to pull this tape off. Okay. Don't need that tape anymore. That didn't give me much slack here, so I am going to have to undo this tape over here. Give me some more slack. I'm going to tape that back down so I don't lose it. Now I got a bit more slack over here. So I'm going to use that slack to um, um, I'm going to get my masking tape here. And I'm going to take a piece of masking tape. And I'm going to, first off I'm going to take off this blue uh, labeling tape because that will uh, uh, not let it go through there very well. If you look at where, if you look in the end of the um, wing, base end of the wing here, you can see where that uh, uh, string is going and the, the ribs of the wing um, have about, I'd say, well, you can see here, it ha that's about a, um, a little more than a half an inch, maybe five eighths of an inch opening there. So all we need to do is um, not lose this string and tape the string to the end. And that's why I'm using masking tape because it doesn't leave a lot of residue. And uh, the way I do this is um, I tape, I put the string 
in the center of the um, connector. I'll put the tape on it. I'm also leaving a bit of the string hanging out to the uh, side here. So I uh, let me get that position just right. Okay, I want to put the masking tape starting at the end of the connector like that okay and then I fold the tape around once and then on the second go around I'm going to fold this end of the string over and then put this tape um, around it so that the string doesn't pull out. So now if I pull this through and I pull the string, this, this string is, comes up, uh, caught by tape, folded over, caught by tape, and uh, then it should pull through nicely. And I'm going to show you that technique up a little closer so you can see it better. Okay, And uh, it's the technique of, of how to have a piece of string a uh, little string out of the servo hole here and uh, so you can pull the lead through so I'm gonna uh, I've got a piece of tape started on the uh, servo lead I'm going to um, pick up this nice fine piece of um, thread I'm gonna set it on the servo lead Okay. And then I'm going to wrap the tape over, come around again. And before I wrap it on this time, I'm going to take the piece of string and pull it this way. And then pull it that way so the string is caught a second time. And uh, wrap the tape up. And now I've got a good secure, that string won't come out. Um, okay. Don't need the tape here anymore. Don't need the tape. A little bitty piece of tape stuck on the covering. And just like magic, I'm going to get rid of that little piece of tape. I'm going to pull that little string through. Sometimes you have to wiggle it a little bit. And just like magic, it comes out the other side. Okay. And now if you give this a tug, you, you won't um, undo the connection between the servo wire and the extension wire because we've got uh, electrician tape on it. And now we want to... Um, Put the servo in the correct direction, so the servo arm ought to be close as possible to the horn, and the servo arm um, is on the right as I'm looking at it here, uh, on the side where the servo arm is. Remember the, I'm sorry, the control horn is to one side of this opening, and so that servo arm is to that side of that opening. Okay. There we go. So now that's in place. I'm going to take this string off till I'm done. <laughs> Just in case we need to pull it back out. Uh, don't know that we need to do that, but uh, we might. Okay. Um, uh, the next thing to do is to screw this servo down. And uh, for that I'm going to need the, the rubber grommets and my um, uh, drill, uh, my pin vise, and um, going to need a bit of super glue. So let me go get those items and I'll be right back. All right, so now the servos um, <coughs> need their grommets and stuff. I'm going to take one of the bags that came with it. And there are going to be four rubber grommets. 
There you go. One, two, three, four rubber grommets. And we're going to put that in the servo. And uh, they go in a certain way. If you look at the grommet, um, they really only go in one direction. The back of the grommet here is flat on this side, not flat on that side, and so that's the side that goes in the hole. And it takes a while to get them pushed in. There we go. Okay. One grommet down. Again, get it turned right, and what you're looking for is the back of that grommet is flat. Okay, and then the other side of this grommet, the uh, indentation goes um, into the hole of the uh, where the screws go. Okay, and the purpose of the rubber grommet is to keep the uh, vibrations away from the servo. Manufacturer recommends them. Some people say, oh, the grommets don't do anything. I'm a believer that the manufacturer knows best. Okay, so now the um, little brass, um, I forget the name of that, but it's, uh, it's a little brass um, um, eyelet. The eyelet goes um, from the bottom of the servo up, okay? So the eyelet, uh, turn the servo upside down, push the eyelet into the grommet. That way the, the rounded over part is against the uh, wing. Uh, if you did it the other way around, the other end of the grommet is very sharp. And uh, as you tighten it down, it'd eat into the servo. I mean, into, eat into the wing. You don't want that. Okay. Two eyelets down, two to go. Three eyelets down. One to go. Okay, I can just hear you all fast forwarding through this, which is just fine. Okay, four eyelets in. I want to show you in real time how long it takes to do this. So that's okay. Um, okay, so now that the eyelets and the grommets are in, I can pull this down. And now we got to figure out where these screws go. I'm going to try to center it. Remember that the arm. Uh, of the servo is as close as possible to the horn and it's on the correct side and uh, now I'm going to measure the size of the screw I've got my uh, Darson digital caliper here because you never know what the size screw is I'm going to turn it on. It's going to uh, zero out. Let me see here. Let me zero it again. There we go. So it's uh, zero millimeters. Open it up. Measure the diameter of the screw. Two point. Okay. So that is a 2.09 in millimeters, by the way, if you must know, like I must know. So, in fractions of an inch, that is a 564 um, size diameter uh, screw. So, 564 turn the caliper off. 
put it back in this little home. So 564 is the diameter of that and we don't want to eat it eat into it too much. So let's see what my pin vise has here. Um, actually might work. Let's turn the caliper back on. I'm going to put it back in millimeters. I'm going to zero it out. And my pin vise is 1.39. I think that's my standard one I use. And so 1.39, that's a, not quite enough. I'm going to try to get it down to one millimeter, or a little less than a millimeter. Okay, so I've got my um, box of, of um, drill bits here. And let me see which one is the largest here. Okay, looks like I have one here that's 0.8. He might be good enough. Point 0.8 of a millimeter. That's where I point a of a millimeter. Either, well, okay, that is absolutely the smallest one I got. I don't need him. Let me see if I can see what this last one is here. Okay, he looks very nice size. And let's put this little slide cover back on before we lose everything in here. There we go. Alright, so that little jewel is... 0.96 millimeters. That's a silly millimeter. Okay, so we're going to use the 0.96 silly millimeter instead of the 1.4 millimeter drill bit. Let's unscrew that, pull the old one out, put the new one in, the pin vise. And make sure it's going to center correctly. Okay, collet is centered correctly. So now, part of the reason for doing this is um, this is going to be better to puncture the covering with and drill the pilot hole. And so what I'm going to do is just guesstimate where the center of the hole is and start drilling. Puncture through. Alright. So now what I'm going to do is um, take my little screwdriver. If the screwdriver is little enough, yep, should be. And I'm going to drill that in. I'm not going to thread it very tight. Just enough to um, tap the hole with threads. Okay, this is going to do two things. Okay, that's going to center that. And um, I want, to, I want it to stay in the center. I'm going to tighten it a little bit more. Still moving around. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, now I'm going to drill another hole on the opposite side. Sort of square the servo in the hole. These screws are fairly long, so I'm drilling all the way through whatever wood is underneath there. And I'm going to screw 
this one in. Okay, I'm gonna, now I'm going to do two pilot holes at once. done. Get me a screw and screw him home. I'm not going all the way down on, on the last two, don't need to. Um, drill bit first. Okay. And last screw. Could go get my tweezers, but this is working fine. Okay, now that those four in are in, next thing we're going to do is take them out and drop some thin CA in there to make sure that the uh, hole is hardened up. So basically what these screws did was uh, tap some threads into that balsa. Okay, now you take them out carefully. Take all four out. Pull the servo aside, um, uh, go get some uh, thin CA, be right back. Okay, I'm back and I got my four holes and the servo sitting over there. And now I'm gonna, I got my um, mercury adhesive thin viscosity CA and I've got my little, um, as you can see, my little applicator there. And by the way, it's the same applicator I've been using all the time. The, the rinsing out is uh, working pretty good. I'm just going to try to put a couple of drops. Uh, as long as they're good drops, two should work. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Okay. Um, CA done. Gonna let that sit for the CA to rest long enough. There's a bit of CA on the outside. I'm going to wipe that off. Um, and uh, also while I was away I got the left wing up to the same condition as the right wing and uh, so I'm going to um, get the left wing. Uh, looks identical. All the holes are built. The grommets are in place and all that. And so I'm going to so I could CA them both at the same time. I'll do that and uh, be back and uh, uh, after I uh, CA the uh, other wing. Thank you. Okay, so the next thing to do is to um, put the uh, servo in. You gotta make sure you're pointing the servo in the right direction. The 
arm on the servo should be closest to the control horn here and uh, because of the wire on the servo you point that in first and drop it down in obviously and then you can pull the wire down here at the end this wire still has um, the uh, string on it we'll fix that in a minute and then uh, so this is going to be the uh, more or less I guess you'll call it the permanent installation of the um, servo so I've got the uh, four screws and uh, I'm going to hold this. I can see the four holes that I drilled and um, put the uh, thin CA in. <clears throat> so that's already been done. I'm going to start this um, screw just to get it started nice and straight up and down. Okay. Uh, you don't actually have to do that, but I'm going to use the um, um, battery powered screwdriver to screw it in. Okay, that's uh, reasonably tight but not 100%. I'll get the other four in and do a final tightening on them. Okay, I'm going to start the other three screws into their holes. So I don't have to keep switching tools. I like to start it by hand to make sure it gets going nice and straight. Electric screwdriver. Electric screwdriver is nice because uh, it, it's easier to hold and turn on, and it's more powerful than you are for the twisting. Okay. I'm trying to go down as far as I can with this, but I'll inspect it and see that they're all the way down. One way to tell that they're all the way down is that the um, uh, rubber grommet should get squeezed a little bit. So these, all these need a little bit more. Okay. Once you see the rubber grommet squeezed a little bit, then we're uh, home, all the way home. Okay, that one's good. Okay, so the rubber grommets are squeezed enough. The uh, thing is in there good and tight. Um, the arm is on the correct side. 